Now I'm going to teach you how to Fabreng. Fabreng um, roughly translates as gathering, but that's not a very good translation. Fabreng is a Yiddish word for when the Hasidim get together uh, with the Rebbe or even without the Rebbe or with the Rebbe in, in his neshama and not his body. Um, it's the getting together. It's The best translation, Rabbi Steinsalt said, it's entertainment. For, because they, it was very difficult life back in Eastern Europe in the old days. So they, when the Rebbe would come to town, they'd make a table and, and food, and they'd, sometimes the Rebbe would play music, and they'd say words of Torah, and it was, the, it was like that's how they entertain themselves. So a good, tra a good translation, according to Rabbi Steinsalt, is entertainment. But I would add that it's holy entertainment. So we're going to for brag. Here we got beastly. Um, got a little wine here. Yud Shvat is the day that the sixth Lubavitch Rebbe, the Rayats, passed away. Um, about, oh, wow, 40 years ago or so. Um, fifth, maybe 50. I don't remember the exact year. <coughs> and um, maybe Tafshin Yud Beit or something. Uh, 5, 7, 12, 5,715. I don't ask ask your rabbi. Ask your local Chabad Shaliach when uh, how long it's been since the sixth Lubavitch Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak Schneerson, a blessed memory, passed away. Bar Bisli and wine. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam. Bore Mine Mazon. And um, if at the Ferbengen, I don't think you can Ferbeng alone. I think you got to get together with at least one other Chassid. And. Um, you eat, you drink, you dance, you sing, and you say words of Torah, say things that the Rebbe said in words of Chassidus. That's a Fabrengan. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Bore Pri Hagefen. You don't have to drink alcohol, you can have a dry Fabrengan too. No problem. Don't drink too much of the Fabrengan or you won't remember a thing that goes on. Okay, today's Yud Shvat. We're going to learn today's Tanya. Um, today's Tanya, we're doing we're in the 18th chapter of the Tanya. The 18th chapter of the Tanya, where it says... Actually, no, we're starting the 19th chapter of the Tanya. Lukuti Amarim Tanya, night chapter 19. <laughs> we explain, what does it mean that God, uh, um, God's candle is man's neshama, the Jewish soul? The Jewish soul is God's candle. Perushi Yisrael, Hakuri Madam, Nishmatam, he... Limshol ko'oraner, the the mashal ko'oraner. The he says that Israel, Israel, which are called Adam. But there's different levels. There's uh, really there's uh, we, because you know a, a Jew and a, and a non-Jew are made of the same stuff, have the same desires, have the same needs. Um, they both both can they know just because somebody's. Jewish doesn't mean he's closer to God. He could be further away from God, but it could both both have the ability to come close to God and to and to and to be righteous. However, there's something different about a Jew that we use a special term for a Jew. There's different levels of, for this this enosh and for for all of humanity is enosh, enoshim, enoshut is humanity. And there's gever is a guy, a person. Ish is above that is a. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a man, and then but there's a special word for man in Hebrew that's just it's basically Jews is Adam. Um, so Adam, Israel is called Adam, and so it says in the pasuk, Nishmat Ner Hashem Nishmat Adam. It doesn't say Gever, it doesn't say Ish, and it doesn't say Enosh. It says Adam. So it's talking about the Jewish neshama. Um, so. That's it's and the a Jewish neshama is compared to the or of a candle shemit naneha tamid lamala. Why does a Jew shuckle? When you daven, we shuckle. Why do we shuckle? It's like we're like the candle of God, and when we shuckle, we, we it's like the candle flickering and the 
the flickering of the candle is the Jew who's going back and forth when he's davening and, uh, and connecting to the one and only. In the, in the Rabbi Scheinberger's that's, uh, Shlita, Rabbi Mordechai Scheinberger's Shichye L'Orchem In Tovim Amen said um, that uh, he said in the East, you know, the meditation, you have the stone, meditate to look like a statue of the Buddha, just no motion whatsoever. That's dead. That's not alive. The, the, the Jew shuckles because we're alive, because we have a neshama that's going up to God. And the, the fire as nature is to go up. Because it's the the light of the fires, does the desire of the light of the fire and its nature is to separate from the wick and to cleave to its source above. The Yasoda Esha Klali and the spiritual source of fire. And that's above, there's some spiritual source of, below the moon. We're talking about, we're using the, the cosmos and the astronomy in order to have signs of spiritual realities. Even though it's, like it says in the Etzchaim of the Arizal, uh, the, in the Kabbalah it talks about this. The Hasidus is based on the Kabbalah, but the Hasidus gives over the inside of the Kabbalah for every Jew, and it's not it's not lofty and inaccessible the way as the Kabbalah is. It's something that every Jew can do. Um, so that's the, so. But so he quotes the Yitzchayim talking about how the sword, the general, the Yitzchayim says how the general source of fire is is uh, is underneath the the orbit of the moon, or perhaps the moon itself somewhere. And it, that's we're talking about a spiritual thing, not the not astronomy here. So um, and it's. Uh, but but that spiritual source doesn't illuminate below. And also, but if it's connected to its source, it's completely nullified before the source, the way a candle is nullified before the sun. But still, the fire just wants to unite with its source of fire somewhere uh, between the stratosphere and the moon. So. Again, we're not talking about astronomy, but that's just that's that's a hint of some spiritual reality. This this place between the moon and the and the and the stratosphere of the of the planet Earth. Kach nishmat adam. So the fire decides wants to join to its source. Kach nishmat adam. We can begin at ruach menefesh chafetzav v'chashika b'tivali pared v'letzet min aguf li dabek b'shorsha mokora b'Hashem. So, so too, the, the, the Jewish soul wants to, and it's uh, in the aspect of its ruach and its nefesh, the different levels of soul, the, the, the desire to go up in its nature, to separate from this earth and to connect to its source above, and to cleave close, intense, close connection, to become one with its source above. And its source in the life of all lives. Baruch Hu, may he be blessed. Hagam shetiyeh. Ayin ve'efes, even though that with the just the way the the moth is going to unite with the candle, the moth knows it's going to die, but the, still the moth that wants to join the candle, and so too the light, the, the fire, the candle that wants to join with the source of fire above knows it's going to die and be completely nullified and but and completely, completely um, obliterated, nullified, uh, made as none, in in is totally as not and nothing before its source, when uniting with its source, it still desires to. It doesn't. That doesn't stop it. That doesn't stop the neshama from wanting to unite above. Nothing will remain of the candle if it unites above. It will be nothing like it was before, but still. And that's still its desire, and this desire can be compared to everything. There's all different ramifications of this in the world. This is a, a, a an idea of the candle uniting, the fire uniting to its source above, regardless of how it will be totally nullified and become like nothing. So that, that's true for many things in the world. The cold of she'enu bibechinat tam v'dat and when there's all things that they don't they don't make sense they're not don't, well, don't operate according to knowledge it's against it's against our we, why should we unite above why should we be nullified 
we want to be, we want to be, we want to exist, and we're what? We're giving up our existence for something that we can't, that makes no sense? Ah, that's the, that's the very point. That's the very point. It does, it doesn't make sense in this world, but it makes sense above. Going above knowledge, to raise, to connect to a place above knowledge, above in the intellect, above discursive thought, a place and place that's beyond anything that can be sensed and apprehended and understood according to the way we sense and understand things in this world. So that's the aspect of Chochmah. That's what Chochmah is. The source of Chochmah is beyond. Like we said yesterday in Rabbi Deutsch's Shir, that Chochmah is, even Chochmah in this world is something, this is, is a flash understanding that we can't comprehend, but it's something beyond, there's something beyond in the source of it that, we, that, that makes no intellectual sense whatsoever. That's uh, Chochmah in the Nefesh, which in the, and we said that we said yes we said yesterday that chokhmah is the seat the vessel for the light of the infinite may he be blessed wisdom is the light, is the vessel for the light of the infinite zehu klal and that's a principle of that's the principle of everything so we forbrand on the day of the sixth Lubavitcher Rebbe's yard side his the day he passed away on the tenth of Shvat. It's tough, Shin Ayan Vav. Mashiach should come now.